Okay, got the first three cylinders done on our 1929 Pontiac 206. Got the bar all set up and centered. We're ready to uh, make the next cut here. So let's do it. Let's turn the machine on. RPM's right. We'll get that baby spinning there, get the arbor going, and we will engage the feed. And here we go. That's it, baby. Cutter in. All right, we're gonna grind the valves on our old Pontiac. These are the intake valves. They say intake right on them, believe it or not. But uh, we're gonna use our Sioux 680 valve grinder. We're gonna put her in the chuck. Slide her back and forth. And we'll take a look at her. Looks pretty good. We'll just touch the tip. And there you go. She's ready for another 100 years. Good? Yep. All right, we're gonna put uh, new valve guides in our uh, Pontiac. We got new ones for Maggie. And I got all of them done except the last two. So we'll put our KD valve guide driver in here and drive her home. In. There you go. She's in there. Okay, we're going to grind the seats in this Pontiac. We're going to use an old uh, 1950 seat grinder, a hall. Paul Toledo. So we got our pilot. We're going to stick our pilot in our exhaust valve here. Pop it out. We're going to take our seat grinder. We're going to set it up on here. It's going to come to a stop. Make sure our stone doesn't hit, which it does not. Flip the switch. And then we'll adjust to grind it. It's starting to hit there. Pretty good. We'll take our pilot out. Let me get a close up of that. Looks pretty good. So we'll take one of our new exhaust valves. We'll put some uh, Prussian blue on it. Kind of smear it on there a little bit. We'll stick it in our hole. Grab our lapping tool here, stick her on. Yeah. The seat looks really good. It's around the seat and the valve. Well, then I smeared it. Looks really good. So. That's how you grind uh, valve seats in a 1929 Pontiac with a hall seat grinder. Okay, 
Okay, we're decking our 1929 Pontiac block. Taking six thousandths off to true it up. We're not gonna get all of it off. I mean, it's got some pitting around here, around this uh, exhaust valve. See, it's not gonna hurt anything for this old girl, but uh, we'll straighten her out and uh, go from there. Pontiac here getting the uh, engine kind of dialed in uh, I'm gonna go ahead and check uh, oil pressure uh, this thing has a mechanical adjustable relief valve uh, right there so <laughs> the Pontiac service manual from 1929 says drive at 30 mile an hour and adjust the oil pressure to about 25 psi well of course oils and technology and everything has changed so We'll see what we got here with this uh, old drill. Careful not to rip my hand off. Look at that. I have nothing to center it. That's where the distributor goes. But... That's pretty good. So I'll probably adjust that regulator up just a little bit. 
but at least we got something. Cool. Neat old rig. Okay, I'm gonna adjust this uh, regulator and see where we can get our pressure at. Again, I don't know how fast I'm turning with my hillbilly drill set up, but I'm gonna turn this valve clockwise. That came up a little bit. Perfect. That's 30 PSI, that's good enough for this old wreck. Cool. There we go, we adjusted our uh, regulator up. Got another 5, 6 PSI out of her. She'll be good to go. Okay, I adjusted up our uh, regulator a little bit. Uh, we'll see what we got. Yeah. That's pretty good for this old wreck. Hell yeah. With the wall oil pressure gun there. Cool. Ship it. Okay, working on the uh, manifold for the Pontiac. Uh, clean it up. I noticed there's a hole right there. It's all rotten through. Uh, that's where exhaust goes. You know, years ago, anything carbureted, even all the way up to the early 90s, there was always heat in the intake because it would ice up. You know, you got air rushing through a Venturi. Um, creates cold temperature in there. So uh, instead of carbon icing where it would quit running and stalling and so forth, they put heat there. So that'll grow rotted out. I'm going to uh, braise it. I just touched it on our resurfacer. I'm gonna have to go a little more to see how far off it is. You can see it's off a little bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and braise this and see what happens. Okay, now what I'm working on the Pontiac is the flywheel. Uh, I had the clutch uh, sent out and redone, and now I'm going to machine the flywheel, and this is a step flywheel. So this is where the clutch disc rides. There's a little lip here. Okay, but that's not really the step. The step is here. Um, so the pressure plate, see the bolt holes? Okay, the pressure plate bolts here. So the dimension from here to here is critical, because if I screw that up, uh, by a great number, the clutch isn't going to work right. So we're going to use our handy dandy depth mic and we're going to measure what it was before I started. And actually I already called this measurement into the clutch place. Uh, our friends at South Bend Clutch in Indiana, they're super. So they set the clutch up for one inch, 180. Now I'm at like 177, yeah. So I had them set up for one inch 180 and now uh, we'll go ahead and get started machining this and then I'm going to machine this first so it's flat and then I'll machine this outer lip here uh, until we get our dimensions so we make sure our clutch works. Okay, I've got our flywheel all set up on our Van Norman FG100 grinder. Uh, we're going to take a light cut here and see how well this thing uh, cleans up. Fire up the machine here. Down a little bit so we start to touch.
but still good viable tool. Two jobs like this, it's nice feeling to do them right. Obviously we offer this service. Yeah, I'll uh, finish her up here. Okay, I got our uh, main uh, disc surface all ground up, come out nice. Um, I just took a measurement and it is 145,000. So I need to get to, or one inch 145, I need to get to 180. So I gotta take off 35,000, this is what I had to take off of here. So I'm gonna take 35,000 off this upper lip. So we'll go ahead and fire up our machine. A little coolant on there. So I've got the machine set up to cut the outer edge. So this is a small process because I, obviously if I take too much off, I've got to cut the main surface. So we'll take a little bit off here and we'll stop it and we'll check see where it goes. Okay, getting ready to resurface our uh, intake and exhaust manifold for our 1929 Pontiac on our Storm Vulcan 85C. So step one is get this manifold as level as possible. Now this is tricky because this thing is so wore out and warped, you know, it's hard to get a good reading on it. So what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna get it as close as we can. So I believe we're pretty close right there. That's not bad. And we'll check it here. The level's about centered on there. Oops. Okay, getting ready to resurface our exhaust and intake manifold assembly off our 1929 Pontiac. Um, I've done the hard part already. I've got it as level as possible uh, both ways. So on our universal fixtures. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take a uh, test cut here. Fire at the mill. I'll run this down so it just starts to touch. All right, I'm gonna back it off. All right, I'm just off. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off 10,000. So my mark is right there, so I'm gonna rotate my dial to zero. Oops. So I know where I just touched, that, that's the zero mark. Close enough. All right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this ten thousandths. I know it's going to take more than that, but let's just see how bad it is. All right, then I'll lock her down, and then we'll fire up our uh, unit here, forward or reverse. We want to go forward. Engage, and we'll turn the dial up. Let's see what happens. Be a fun 
Well, we'll see how she looks here after the first cut. Okay, after three cuts, we got our manifold looking pretty good. So, we'll paint her up, put her on, and maybe she'll make some smoke soon. She runs. Not pretty good, I got a little exhaust leak and gotta tune it in, but I don't wanna let it run too long because we don't have any cooling in it, but Okay, ready to test drive the Pontiac for the first time after the engine overhaul and the work we did over the last couple years. So, found another carburetor on eBay uh, to rebuild since the other one was pretty much junk. So, we got it running pretty good, safe enough where I think I can drive it and not get stuck. So, this is a really cool old car. I really like this thing. It's all original. It is original paint, original interior. I mean, it's actually not in bad shape. It is just so cool. Just think what it would be like driving this thing back in 1929.
you know, wood floor. A lot of GM cars didn't hang around because they were a lot of wood where the Fords weren't. So this thing is just a sweet old rig. But like I say, I've been working on this thing for well, at least two years. We've had it almost 10. <clears throat> I said the engine knocked real bad. The wrist pins and that were junk, so we finally are, are getting her done. But um, it's a real cool rig. So we're gonna fire this thing up and we're gonna take it for a ride. back to the shop here on this blustery January day. Just made a trip around the horn. This thing runs awesome. Can't wait to drive this thing this spring. The weather's nice, no salt on the roads. Of course, we got salt on the roads here, but hey, if this thing lasted 90 some years, <laughs> it could take a couple, a couple trips in the salt, so. There you go, folks. There's a test drive of the old 1929, <coughs> excuse me, Pontiac, all original. It has originally 43,700 some odd miles. Looks like I got the oil pressure dialed in just about right at this hot little run, about 20 pounds of idle, that's fine. Absolutely hardly any temperature in this, this thing, which is good. Fuel gauge doesn't work, that's hydrostatic. Maybe we'll get that working one of these days, but. I really like this car. This thing is so cool. It's all original. There's not many cars you're gonna find like this uh, anymore. <laughs>